And Frank, how would you describe just the, the full four practices and what you were trying to get accomplished versus now, how that changes the game start coming um, before you get into the regular season schedule? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, each day has been a little bit different, but um, you know, our energy has been off the charts good. Uh, really attentive to what we're trying to install, uh, you know, with regard to our system and our culture, and um, you know, a little bit more intense than what we would do in a in a normal regular season once the games begin. Um, you know, we have a game today's practice was no contact, you know, obviously because we have a, a game less than 24 hours away, uh, but it was intense and there was speed and there was um, you know a, you know energy to it that uh, was productive. Uh, but that'll change, obviously, when games come around. Frank, in the case that you do start, or whether it's every game or some games, with a big lineup, have you seen differences in what DeAndre and Dwight do uh, with respective units and, and how those guys might fit uh, in that sense? Yeah, well, um, you know, we, we do anticipate most of the time having either AD, Dwight, or, or DeAndre in there. Um, you know, we have talked about playing some centerless lineups uh, this year. Uh, but for the most part, you know, one of those guys will be in there. And, and then, you know, and again, striking the right balance uh, with AD playing with one of those guys or as the center, um, you know, will be something we'll, we'll evaluate throughout the year. Uh, but we'll, we'll find that balance. Yeah. It's important to stay centered as a coach. Yeah. Yes. Um, what's the outlook for... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's, the out uh, <laughs> what's the outlook for Trevor with that ankle? Is that something that could be a lingering thing? Yeah, uh, we'll see. You know, um, right now it's uh, you know he's still just out with the with the sore ankle, and um, you know right now we're just in a, in a in the process of evaluating day to day and see where it's at. Is that something that that occurred during the first practice, or something he was dealing with when he came into camp? I think he was dealing with it before okay. uh, camp began. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The number of like 11 new guys is kind of a daunting thing to fit to the to new mix but two of the guys were just uh here with you less than a year ago and rondo and dwight between those two and thd and lebron and ad is there any sort of do they have any sort of build-in camaraderie or like have you noticed anything uh, particularly with with dwight and rondo coming back to the fold yeah i mean i think th those guys you know with with the nature of the you know, the shortened season and the pandemic, you know, running into October with how we won a championship, it's almost like those guys never left. You know, it, it really is. You know, they'd come in and uh, have understood everything we're doing as if they're returning players. Uh, there's very little of a learning curve and, and obviously the continuity with, with Braun and AD and in some ways Talon uh, is already there. You know, I, I don't think they're, they're going to skip a beat. Um, so I do view, view those guys as continuity guys. Uh, I'll just go. Um, Dwight handled the kind of adjustment to role with you guys the first time around so well. Like kind of, especially in the postseason, right? There were series where he didn't play, and then there were series he was really important where he started. Um, how do you think DJ is going to handle that? He hasn't really been put to that sort of. Sometimes it's going to be this. Sometimes it's not. Is there any way to really know? Or yeah, well, everybody on this team, you know, is uh, you know, has, has knows coming into this group that. Uh, whatever needs to happen for our team to win a championship, you know, they have to be bought into that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's the minimum requirement uh, for playing for the LA Lakers, and sometimes that does mean uh, not playing. You know, um, you know, everybody understands that. You know, I don't think DJ uh, DJ has been shown nothing but a you know a, a first class attitude for for everything that we're we're trying to do, and um, you know, I think he's uh, on board with everybody else. You know, that whatever the team needs. That's what he's going to be on, on board with. Um, realistically, you know, you you guys are have a glut of your best players out tomorrow. The Nets announced, I think, you know, most of theirs. What's the value of tomorrow? What do you get out of tomorrow's game? Well, it's it's different for everybody. You know, um, AD is going to play. AD didn't finish the the, the season. He finished in, in street clothes because of injury. You know, he wants to get out there, so we'll support him on that. Um, you know, he'll be able to get his feet wet and, and get back on the floor. Um, you know, the guys that are going to play, you know, are, are really, it's really about, you know, our group. You know, we have the mindset that, you know, while managing minutes responsibly and managing bodies for the marathon, um, that the five guys on the floor are going to play all out. We're going to play harder than, harder than our opponent, more physical than our opponent, and that habit's going to win for us in the playoffs. So. Um, you know, everybody that's, that's coming in and, uh, you know, going to play, in particular the new guys, 
you know, they got to get up speed with everything we're, we're doing with our with the new system. You know, so there's there's uh, to me tremendous value in, in tomorrow's game. And a quick follow up. Uh, you know, I think you mentioned the other day that the first two games you kind of see guys in and out. Is it, do you think in that second game at Phoenix you'll see the same guys out, or you're going to flop it where maybe AD takes a game off, or how do you plan? Yeah, we're we're taking it game by game. You know, um, we know we don't want to overdo. You know, the the main guys we we, we want to get them uh, enough to get ready for the the season and and nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? We, we really don't want to overdo it with those guys, um, but we want to give them enough time to get a rhythm with each other and get their legs under them. Um, you know, so the decisions on the preseasons will be made game to game. Davide? Hi, Coach. Davide from Italy here. What's up, Davide? Obviously, good to see you, in, you know, virtually. Um, obviously, you're still in your first week of training camp, but. Um, what do you think of you have done so far, and are you happy with what you what you guys are, were able to do so far? Yeah, I feel good that we've gotten a lot of our system in uh, in a very short period of time. You know, obviously just uh, with the returning guys and um, you know a, a returning coaching staff for the most part. Um, you know, we've we've been able to be very efficient with the the short time that we've had here this week. And um, you know, but obviously you know there's still a long way to go, and you know there are a lot of it, it, a lot of times we implement and then you know try to tighten the screws and, and focus on the details after the fact, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Harrison. Hey Frank, I feel like we've talked to you about every new guy except for maybe Malik Monk. I was just curious what you've seen from him so far in training camp, and if anything you know has stood out to you that maybe you didn't know about him as a player before. Yeah, I just think the, the versatility offensively of, of what he brings to the table has been. Uh, you know, the, what stood out the most with Malik, um, he's had a great first few days for us. He really has. He shot the ball well, uh, but he's really, uh, you know, just, just uh, performed offensively in a lot of different ways. You know, his cutting has been very effective, his movement without the basketball, running the floor, his ability to catch lobs, you know, uh, both on the break and, and, and in the half court. Um, you know, what he can do off the bounce. He can initiate offense, you know, um, I, don't, I wouldn't put him as a as a, as a full-time point guard, but you can run certain actions where he's initiating for you, you know, because he's comfortable with his handles. Uh, so his offensive versatility is probably what sticks out the most. The last, uh, Bill has a follow-up. Oh, this is probably a stupid question too, but um, do you and like Steve Nash coordinate? Like we're not playing stars in, in this game. Is there a conversation like that? Not really. Okay. Uh, I mean, we haven't for this game. Okay. Um, you know, some there, there's been times in the past. I remember Steve Clifford and I talking about you know playing, trying to play zone, so we, so we can both work on it uh, in the bubble one time. But I mean, for the most part, you know, you just focus on you know you know you're going to have five opponents on the floor, and you know what's best for your group, uh, you know, to go and, and make use of that Sunday, you know, to help you get ready for the season. But we did not coordinate for this one.